everyone. Happy Patriots Day. I uh, got ready a few remarks because it is a special day, especially here in New England. And um, tonight's remarks, this isn't a sound bite. So please do uh, tune in for a few minutes and sit with me while I, stay with me while I share a few of my thoughts this evening. So exactly 246 years ago today, April 19th, 1775, local farmers, regular citizens, took up arms to defend liberty. Regular citizens dared to die to leave their children free. It was not the colonists' first effort to make their government understand their growing frustration and anger against a government insulated and isolated from themselves. A government that demanded taxes, but denied representation. Nor would it be the last. These revolutionaries went on to found our great nation, which has ever since been a worldwide beacon for liberty. It is a privilege to be a citizen of the United States of America. A privilege that we must continue to earn as regular people by engaging in the defining and defending of liberty just as our forefathers. There are parallels from that time that unfortunately resonate with today, when government leaders decide that they have the power to compel their fellow citizens to act in ways they do not wish to. There should be a clear, convincing, even unquestionable argument to justify what our ancestors called tyranny. The autocratic rule of executive mandates based on good intentions do not make this prolonged usurpation of power acceptable or appropriate. I speak today from the now closed Sunday River Brewing Company in Bethel. Nearly a year ago, the owners of this once thriving business had the audacity to cherish freedom and resist mandates imposed by the executive branch. What should eventually come to light in the court of law is that a government seeking to make an example of a mouthy but otherwise law-abiding business owner crushed resistance through their ability to refuse licensure. To briefly update you on what transpired here, while there are many instances where the brew pub failed to follow social distancing guidelines and masking, orders after numerous fines the brew pub did come into complete compliance with the public health mandates however and very unfortunately for them their business license came up for renewal close on the heels of that very same event and it was during this renewal process that the state deemed them a permanent public health hazard and has refused renewal of any license until the pandemic is over this verdict stands, despite the loss of good paying jobs for about 65 of our neighbors. No outbreak was ever reported from this location. And in fact, last November, the month during which Sunday River Brewing closed for good, only one person in Oxford County died of COVID-19 or with COVID-19. If you think that this business owner in some way may be asked for uh, this closure by loudly denouncing executive mandates, I wonder then if you would believe Americans in general should have repercussions such as this for speaking out against the government. Do we want our citizenry afraid to speak against government oppression? I can tell you now that countless businesses that I speak with and ask them to tell their story, they are afraid to do so and not just from government repercussions, but from what's happening in our communities and the backlash there. That same month that the brew pub closed, nursing homes reported 23 deaths statewide. Instead of sending PPE and enough cash to double or even triple the available staff at these facilities, which were dreadfully short staffed, our state government deployed lawyers, health inspectors, and bureaucrats to harass and eventually close this local business. I use the example of the brew pub because its headlines have made it known far and wide, but all across Maine, our government spent resources 
stalking local businesses, and causing some to close all over our state, not just here, rather than focusing on the neediest and most vulnerable in nursing homes. In times of crisis, it is a government's responsibility to be responsive, to allow diverse perspectives, a seat at the table, and to make transparent decisions based on equally transparent and sound data. The COVID-19 virus with all the accompanying misinformation and hushed dissenting voices has left us all wondering what the truth really is. Grasping to make sense of what has been required of us and to decide what actions should rise to the level of imperatives. Every nation and every state has taken a different approach at different times. Some, such as in Sweden, have handled the virus in a much more collaborative manner with their people, with very few mandates. There will be more truth known about this virus in the future when we have an opportunity to look back and study it using accurate data. And we will then figure out which actions were helpful and which were too destructive. But while there are not definitive answers to our, many of our questions, it is important to recognize that exact fact and not blindly believe that there is solid science providing just cause to silence debate. For instance, while the Mills administration placed great emphasis on the COVID restrictions they have implemented, stating that these restrictions have saved untold lives, there is evidence that these mandates have had little effect on the virus. Tonight I brought a chart showing the COVID cases per 100,000 residents in the six New England states over time. Thank you for my cameraman for, for zooming in on this. Um, so in this, um, you will notice for the most part that the graph for each of the six states follows the same general pattern, even though each has made different decisions and placed different restrictions on their people. What is seen in an overview glance is that it's actually population density of each state that seems the most indicative of the number of COVID cases. In a Twitter post from last November, Dr. Shaw states that Maine's infection rate a few weeks before Thanksgiving was roughly the level it was at July 8th. While Shaw may not have recognized it at the time, July 8th was actually the day Governor Mills released her order, forcing businesses to crack down on mask wearing. How then can we say definitively that a mask mandate has benefited Maine people? Currently, only about half the states now have mask mandates and our neighboring state of New Hampshire just ended theirs. If masks are irrefutable science, worth destroying businesses and ignoring the rights of disabled people, what science does Maine CDC have in its position that eludes New Hampshire CDC? I'm not a scientist or an epidemiologist. I'm a regular citizen like you, asking questions and trying to make sense out of a terrible situation. But I do know this, there is no such thing as settled science. Science is an inquiry. And as conclusions drawn from scientific inquiry touches our lives and our livelihoods and our futures, seeking truth demands that we increase debate and discussion. Given the reality of uncertainty, do we really believe that a person who fights against a mandate should be completely denounced or should we be opening up the dialogue? No matter what government dictates come our way now or in the future, it is always up to us to question their veracity, to question the appropriateness and the benefit. We are Americans, we are equal to one another and capable of governing ourselves. One government action that we should all clearly abhor is the online portal set up by the governor's office for Maine people to report non-compliance of health mandates. In short, the introduction of this narc on your neighbor portal, we were asked to police each other. I remain shocked 
at the ability of our government that has given any one citizen, no matter their intentions, who can remain anonymous to wreak havoc in the life or livelihood of their neighbor. I have with me here a whole stack of complaints from that, com that portal. This is not how the government should be encouraging citizens to treat one another in the midst of a worldwide pandemic. There is ample fear and stress inherent in such a crisis without increasing hostility between neighbors. Back in July, I did a video discussing this reporting portal, asking if this was the type of Maine that we all want to live in. And I ended that by saying, I hope that the portal remained empty cyberspace. As you can see here, well over 12,000 reports, all of this paper filled with reports against our neighbors. The hope was in vain. These reports have been made against ex-spouses and teachers and coaches and wait staff, students, schools, churches, the list goes on and on. Recently, as part of my work with the Judiciary Committee, we heard a bill that touches on the issue of these anonymous complaints. Brought about because the portal has been used by vindictive and dishonest people to gain competitive business advantage and also to bring those bring harm to those with whom they disagree politically. This stack was brought about and uh, made possible through a freedom of access request by Representative Laurel Libby because our government has laws that it can't work in darkness and there has to be transparency. And so these are publicly available documents. But this stack of paper does not represent the best of America, but us at our worst. I'm ashamed the Maine government created such a vile mechanism. And I abhor the damage and distress it has wreaked all across Maine. Tonight, when I get home, I'm gonna light a fire and I'm gonna burn every last page of these. Each one represents pain inflicted on another fellow, my neighbors, your neighbors, and I will pray for healing in our communities. We must not continue our fights of the past, but look to build our future. There's no denying that we are still reeling from disruptive times but we need to forge a path ahead, a way to bring collaboration back to our towns and back to our political discourse. Even if COVID or some variation of it stays with us into the indefinite future, we have to begin working together. Government policies can strengthen or they can do great harm. Now is not the time to cower, nor is it time to silence the opposing voices. We are a people born of liberty. We need robust debate. We need people who will put in effort, who are willing to stand for liberty despite the backlash. In short, we need patriots. I thank you for joining me this evening and for listening. I, I'm here to stand and to build the future. I, I wanna look beyond and past uh, this which has been in our past. I don't want this type of thing to ever define us in the future. So it is my honor uh, to be serving with you and for you in this experiment of liberty and for governing ourselves. And I ask you to join me in it and to let your dialogue to be, be civil because anonymous reports are always hurting someone as is our dialogue online when it, we feel we're behind the the protection of a screen. We're still damaging real people. Again, thank you for being with me tonight. Have a wonderful Patriots Day.